On tonight's episode of the Gamecasters, we talk a little bit about collecting versus playing. We play a new game for you, and we do our top five silly fun games. Stay tuned. Welcome back to episode 24 of The Gamecasters. My name is Ryan. And I'm Natalie. And we are The Gamecasters. And we're coming at you live. Just, we're recording. It's not live. Record, we're coming at you recorded from the basement of Commerce Township, Michigan. I'll give you our exact address. And it is... Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> All right, Natalie wouldn't let me give our exact address. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you all to come here and hang out with us while we record next time. So then we could say it's live. Could we say it's live if people were here and we were recording? Yeah, in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. In our basement. Oh, yeah, in front of a live audience. So, we're back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was a nice preamble to the show. <sighs> what have we been up to these last few days since we've been an engaged couple? Oh, we were disengaged for a time. Yeah, we'll get right? to that later. And then we got re-engaged. And actually, right now, currently, we're disengaged. Oh, yeah, I took my ring to get resized. Yep, and they took it from her. For like two weeks. No, it's okay. Maybe more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel like we're going to go to work tomorrow morning and people are going to be like, oh my gosh. Did they break up? What happened? <laughs> They're going to ask you like, oh, see, I knew this would happen. This is off its romance. It's just never work out. <laughs> right? So let's talk about some games since that's what you guys are here to talk about. Yeah, we've No, you're here to listen ones. to us talk about. So last episode, I kind of teased a game that I wanted to talk about. But we didn't kind of have enough time because last episode went a little long. You may have noticed we kind of like 1.5 speeded it at the end there just to get it to one and a half hours. <laughs> one hour and a half, 90 minutes. Uh, the last top five was like, blah, 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 blah. we like micro machined it. It was like yeah, super we fast. fast. It's like lightning quick. It was kind of funny though, <laughs> I thought. So that game that I wanted to talk about last time is called Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire. It's by Chip Theory Games, designed by Josh Adam. And Adam Carlson. And there's another guy, Josh Weagle. <laughs> That's not his name. Josh Weagus. Sorry, Josh. I'm Josh sorry. W. I think maybe it's a W. Oh. And these three guys designed Cloudspire. They're the, the awesome team behind Too Many Bones and Hoplomachus. And what's the other game that I had from them? That littler, that littler game. Triplock. Oh, yeah. Triplock. With the chips. Oh, they're well, called Chip all, Theory. All their games have chips. You're joking. That's a joke? No. You're just picking up on that now? Yeah. <laughs> chip theory games, you thought? What did you think? Yes, every single thing they put out has oh, poker that's chips. that's interesting. No, it's not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because everybody, it's the... I, I didn't know oh that. Oh my gosh. What are you, okay, wow, that's, that's blowing my mind right now. I, I mean, it's interesting. It was interesting back in, you know, when they came out with Hoplomachus and it was all poker chips. I never even heard of that game. Okay. Too Many Bones has been out for like five years. Yeah, but I didn't realize years. that was Chip Theory. I'm just starting to you like pick... You knew it was Chip Theory. I've said it on the show I dozens know, and but trillions just, of times. I'm just like recently starting to put together like the um, producers. <laughs> what is it called? Designers? Not designers. Publishers? Publishers of games like, you know, I'll you know one off, though. but... I'm just starting to like put together like groups of them. Oh, I don't normally like pay attention to that, but since we've been doing the show, it's you know, you've been talking about it so much, like picking up on You're it. You're finally more. starting to yeah, get with yeah. the times. Yes, Chip Theory is called Chip Theory because they put chips in every one of the games they put out. So Hoplomachus was their first game. Too Many Bones was their second game. They came out with a little mini game called Trip Lock Third. Then they did another Too Many Bones sequel called Undertow. Then they came out with this little thing called Game to Pick a Game, which again has poker chips. And uh, now they have Cloud Spire, which is their recent release. Just mm -hmm. came out of Gen Con. I just got my copy on, in the mail through Kickstarter. And then the next thing that they're putting out, the, the Kickstarter that just ended, is another Too Many Bones. Uh, it's like a standalone slash expansion called Splice and Dice. Maybe it's just an expansion. I don't remember. Undertow is like a two-player only standalone, but... All the content integrates with the original game. Anyway, that's all their stuff, and all of them have poker chips, and all of them are remote, oh, ridiculously overproduced. Yeah, they're really nice. Holy crap, but they're also really expensive. And really big. 
Well, some of them. <laughs> no, the, well, yeah, you're right. Too the, many bones and Cloud Spire. Big. Eno- enormous. Too many bones doesn't Good even fit in a Good thing we've been getting Calix rid of shelf. a bunch of games or else Cloud Spire wouldn't fit on our shelf. Speaking of that, actually, before we get to Cloud Spire, let's tease that shit a little more, shall we? Listeners, dear sweet listeners, with the topic that I kind of wanted to talk about of this show. We've been doing a mass exodus, and I talked about this last episode. I think I actually said the words mass exodus. Probably. We've been getting rid of like a ton of board games. So in my collection, there's probably two between 250 and 300 games I own, not including expansions. So standalone games only, about 300 or so. And I've been I've become a little disillusioned or jaded, I should say, with the size of the collection and how often we're playing games. There are so many games that we love, like Terra Mystica, Palaces of Carrara, Castles of Burgundy, Hansa Teutonica, Caverna, Grand Austria Hotel, Twa. Istanbul, Kingsburg, Keyflower, Carcassonne, all these kinds of games that we already know, Belfort, that we love. We already know we love these games. And then we have this incredible backlog of games we haven't played yet. Right. And then we also have, you know, in the middle of that, there's like 150 to 200 other games that we just own. Right? Right. So I kind of did the math a little bit, and I determined there's not really enough time to do everything here Mm -mm. like i got 300 games you know maybe 10 percent of them are amazing and those 10 percent of of the games just don't get played at all because it's like i play them you know maybe years ago when they came out they've stayed in the collection for so long because they're amazing and not because you don't want to play them it's just yeah, there's just too much crap. There's too many more games. Yeah, and you don't want to stop buying new games just so you can continue playing your these other games. I tried that with the 10 by 10. We've been doing the 10 by 10 for year yeah, after year. It just doesn't work. <laughs> right. And, and the idea was to play these amazing games. But then it's like, okay, there's 190 or 290 other games that, you know, we're neglecting. So yeah. I started to become a little disillusioned, you know, with the fact of ugh, I have I have 300 games. They're not all amazing. Mm-hmm. And I really only care about the amazing ones, or I should only care about right, the amazing ones. The ones you're ones. excited to get on the table again. Yeah, the ones, Not the ones I that you're play. like, I'd play that again. Yeah, that's good. Right. That was a good game. And I'm finding that. So there was this, what did I call this? This law, Sturgeon's Law, I think is yeah, what it was. We talked about yeah. it on the way to Gen Con. And this law said 10%, no, 90% of everything just in the world is crud. So you take a subset of anything. So we'll take the, the board game hobby. There's maybe. I think on the Board Game Geek database, there's like seventy or 80,000 games Dang. in the database. How many of those games are any good? 10%? You like think? Like really good. Like actually, yeah, like not kind of crappy. So, right? So, okay, that's the kind of, that's kind of the thought is maybe so if 10% of those games are good, uh, could you even shrink that down to my collection? My collection's 300. Now, now that's not taking into account I've already vetted these 300 against those 70,000, yeah. right? So I know that those are, but this is probably the cream of the crop, right? But still, there's still a cream of the crop of the cream of the crop. Yeah, that's And true. those are the games that I think I want to keep around in my collection. So then it kind of begs the question, okay, what kind of a gamer do I want to be? Do I want to accumulate stuff and collect? Because that's a lot of people just love to do that. And we talked about this a few years ago, and Jeremy and I did. I think we had like, are you a collector or are you a player? And I understand how people could just want to collect. You could, cause, because part of this hobby is visual, right? I mean, you're at the table and yeah. how they look is what maybe excites you about playing some of these games so i come downstairs and i look at these shelves and it looks beautiful you know what i mean like i have them set up in a very aesthetically pleasing way i spend a lot of time and effort making them look nice and it's it it gives you like a little endorphin rush you know like a shot to the endorphins (laughs) (laughs) Uh, when you see it all and it makes you feel good but it's kind of going in conflict with this disillusionment I've been feeling where I look at the games and I'm just like, ah, I'm never going to play these. And a lot of these, I don't even really care if I play them or not. Right. Or there's some that you're like, I want to play again, but I haven't played it in four years. What's the likelihood that I'm going to play it? Or I'll play a game like Crown of Amara, for example. I play it and I'm like, that's a good game. I didn't really think it was that great. 
but I want to come back to it and give it another shot. Mm-hmm. When the hell is that going to happen? You know, it's not. Yeah. It's not going to happen for a long time. It's not time. like we play games because, every night. And if when we when we do, we're going to want to play something else. Mm-hmm. And so that tells me, one, okay, Crown of Amara doesn't really deserve a spot in the collection now. Yeah. Because I'm not itching to get back to it. I have this feeling of maybe it's maybe it'll be better if I play it with more people. Yeah. Maybe it'll be better if I try it again. But I have maybe a hundred other games in my collection that I know I like. Right. I know I, I already know I love them and they're good. So this gave me um, kind of a, I was at a crossroads here. What do I do? Do I keep games like this around? And then I, I'm continuing to accumulate games. So now I have to buy more shelves or come up with it. So what I thought I would do recently over maybe the last couple months, I've been kind of kicking this around, is I wanted to do like a mass exodus and just kind yeah. of start getting rid of games that I know I like and are good even, but they're not great and amazing and the best of the best. Like, for instance, let me give you a for instance, La Havre. We played La Havre years ago. Mm -hmm. How long do we play that? Maybe four years ago we played that game and we loved it. We played it one time. We loved it. We have not played it since. Mm -mm. And it sat on my shelf and lasted, survived auction after auction after auction because in my head I'm like, that was a great game. I loved my play of it. It was good. But... But that desire... There's like a bunch of other games we wanted to play before that. So so. what does that tell you? That tells you to me that it's not really that important to me. So I I don't want to keep it around. I do the same thing for like clothes. (laughs) (laughs) I have way too many clothes and, you know, there's certain clothes that I'm like, I don't really want to get rid of this. But a year goes by and I go through my clothes again and I'm like, okay, I didn't want to get rid of this, but I have not worn it once in the last year. It's time kind of thing yeah so there's a few different schools of thought with this there's it's really awesome but i never play it yeah and so for me that's like okay goodbye there's a few games like that i can say la Havre was like that the gallerist is like that was boa is like that like i know those games are great but the they just don't come back to the table for whatever reason either they're too long they take too much front end to reset up and learn and yeah. figure out for only being played one time a year because a lot of these games you're only going to play uh, you know, with all with 300 games, you're only going to play a super heavy game like Lisboa that probably needs multiple plays yeah. to realize. You're only going to play a game like that once a year. And so then it's if like, okay, that. so why am I why am I keeping that around? Mm-hmm. There's a ton of other games that I want to play more. There's the Terra Mysticas. I want to play that game. I just want to like pull that game out and play it once in a while. But I feel like, okay, we have this whiteboard behind you mm-hmm. and there's like 15 games on it that we have not played that are heavier right. that we have to get to. And a lot of them have been sitting on there for like six months mm-hmm. at least. And it's funny, we several times before Ryan even did the auction, we just sat here at the table and looked at all of our games and took turns. I went first, then Ryan, and we just go through all of the shelves and be like, these are all the ones that I wouldn't have a problem getting rid of. You know, and probably the first pass, we were a little conservative. And then we did it again, like a few weeks later, and we were a little less conservative. And we were like, let's just do it as if, like, let's just be cutthroat, you know. Right. We said, let's go through every game, and you tell me if you could not get rid of that. Like no, I'm not. Like no, I'm not. We can't get rid of that. Mm-hmm. And we found that most games we could get rid of. Yeah. And so I thought that's a great system to determine what games I love. You know, I went through on on this one shelf here to my left that I'm looking at right now. Caverna is kind of standing alone. That's mm-hmm. one that never I would never get rid of that. Terry Mystic, I would never get rid of it. Grand Austria Hotel, no. Hans of Tonica, no. Would never get rid of those. You know, then I look at a game like Palace of Crown. No, Underwater Cities. Right now, no. Trajan, I was like, meh, I could get rid of that. Natalie vetoed that one. That's fine. Lorenzo Magnifico, we haven't played it early on. We both love that, right? But there's also, for every game that we said we love and would have to keep, there was 10 that yeah. we didn't love right. and could just go. And so I said, why am I keeping these then? I'm not, a, I don't want to be just a, known for a collector. Sure, it's fun meeting new people. And then when they hear I'm into board games and they find out I have 300 games, that's kind of a, a another little endorphin rush for me because yeah. it's kind of just cool that, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the game guy. And it's, it's, I like impressing people when they come over and in the basement <laughs> and they see the collection. They're yeah. like, wow, this guy knows his stuff. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a, um, I don't know, like an ego hit, I suppose, by getting rid of all these things. But at the same time, it's kind of a liberating feeling. Right. And then plus, you're pretty good at just reinvesting money you make from auctions into new games. So you're not, you know, spending a lot of... Yeah, it's like a self-sustaining organism right. at this point. And you like researching new games and trying to find like the next greatest game. And so this is another good way to keep that going. And that's what you enjoy 
as opposed to just keeping games around that you know you're never right. going to play. And I would encourage all of you to take a serious look at your collection. And I mean, if you have a ton of space or you only have a, a little small collection, it might this might not be for you. But if you're someone like me who has kind of a bigger collection and it's almost big enough where you just know you're not going to play these games, some of these games for years probably, mm-hmm. take a look at those. Go through each game like we, like Natalie and I did and just ask yourself, can I get rid of that? You know, and if you're in your in your head, you're like, no way. Then, you know, great game. But if you're kind of like pausing and like, well, maybe then you, probably then you can probably get rid of it and you're not going to care. Yeah. I've held so many auctions throughout the years and nine times out of 10, I don't ever miss the games. Yeah. There is an occasional time where I get rid of a game and a little bit later, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But out of all the games you've gotten rid of, that does not happen often. My previously owned stat on board game geek is over 600 wow and i did a list maybe a month ago because I, I wanted to do a top five list of games that i that i got rid of that i want to get back it was hard for me to come up with 20 wow so out of 600 i've gotten rid of there good. was about 20 that i was like yeah i probably shouldn't have sold that i want that back so right that's a good that's a good thing so now i get rid of these games i get a little bit of money i i keep space to continue to you know fill back up and hopefully throughout this process, I will then be able to play the games that I know are amazing. And that's what I want to yeah. do. That's only 3%. That's only 3%. Yeah. What? Oh, the 20 games 3% out of 600? 3% regret out of the yeah. 600. <sighs> so the hard part is, you know, a lot of people out there are probably like, well, I don't buy a ton of games. So uh, this isn't a problem for me. Yeah. It is a problem for me. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's probably why it's a problem for me. Because, you know, I go to Gen Con right. and I buy 27 games. Mm-hmm. And then I play a lot of them. And most of those 27 are eh. I think every yeah. game we played at Gen Con this year, er, like big kind of game that so far that we've played, have been eh. Right? Have been like, well, I guess I can get rid of that. I mean, there's games that I want to keep, like The Mind. or not The Mind. Uh, Medium. Yeah, that well, game we haven't played is Black great. Angel I know we haven't played yet. Black Angel yet. We haven't played Abomination. Um, those the only two I think though. Like Bosque was, was okay. Yeah, yeah, Artemis we Project like, really was okay. Sierra about? West was all right. Wow. Right, Th- those games That's were just. Disappointing. Mm, it was a disappointing year for me. Yeah, and but I kind of thought that going in. But there's games we liked. Nine House Panic. We'll talk about that in a little oh, bit. Yeah, we yeah. liked that one a lot. We liked Medium. We liked Team Three. We yes. like you know, but those are like the littler games. Yeah, that's true. And so there wasn't really one clear cut like, oh, I'm so happy I got this, this game, you know, yet. But hopefully Black Angel will do that. So anyway, yeah. I would ask yourselves, like I've been asking myself, how do I want to be as a gamer? And I think I want to be, I really do think I want to whittle my collection down to a perfectly chiseled collection of every game that I pick out, I'm going to be like super excited to play. And I don't have that yet. I have a lot of games here that I'm just kind of like, yeah. Oh, that's a yeah. that's a good game. Well, there's like b- besides just what I'm super excited to play. There are also a lot of other games that we keep that fit like a, a certain, certain situation. A certain situation. Like these are great for like big groups, you know, to have fun with. Or, yeah, these well, that, are great for like. But that's what I mean. Uh, situational is great. Fine. Yeah, so I'm that's fine another, with that. I'm just saying that's an additional reason that we would keep them. Like there are some that that maybe I'm not like super excited to play, but they fit a situation and the best and i would keep it because of that for sure there's a there's a theory called the jones theory and this theory says i think we've talked about this before it says you keep one game of one genre you don't need any more than that oh, so yeah, you know that. you keep one worker placement game one area control game <laughs> one and i don't totally go that strict with it i yeah. just go i everything i do is based on feeling like I look at Wendake, Wendake, Wendake. <laughs> and I remember we had a great time with that game. Yeah, I do remember that. And I've been wanting to play it. But we seriously, I, I was like, if you ask me right now, could we get rid of that? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's not going to like, that's not going to go out the door and I'm going to be like, oh man, Wendake. Yeah. But I would feel that way for about, I would say about 10 to 20% of the collection. I would be like, no, we can't get rid of Codenames Duet. What are we like? No way. Yeah. You yeah. know? Or like, what are we doing? We're getting rid of Castles of Burgundy? No, no, I don't right. think so. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's like a big staple. But Wendake, we could probably get rid of Wendake and I'd be fine with it. Yeah. You know, or Bruges, like, okay, that's not going to make or break anything. And so there's some games too where I'm like, I'm not a big fan of that game, but you're like, no, hard no, we can't get rid of it. And like vice versa. Mm-hmm. 
That's what I want. I want those hard no's. Ask yourself, what are these hard no's? If not, get rid of the other stuff. Get rid of the, cut the, the what is it, the wheat and the chaff. Get rid of the chaff. <laughs> All you want is the wheat. You want the cream to float to the top, right? <laughs> to the top of your pants. What? <laughs> yeah, you want, the, you want the creamy stuff from your pants when you're playing these games. And if you don't get that, oh, you might not boy. need to play it anymore. So get rid of it. Let someone else have it. Make some money. Reinvest into something you think you might love. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that nonsense. Let's Ugh. talk about some games. All right, back to the game Cloud that Spire. I wanted to play or talk about last episode, and this one's called Cloud Spire by Chip Theory Games. The place that makes chips. No. Uh, the they're publisher known... that does games with chips. Yes, poker <laughs> chips, not like, not like Potato sour cream and chips. onion. Yeah, <laughs> so they, <laughs> they have like these clay poker chips, and it's, it's very unique. That's why I love this publisher so much because nobody else in the in the board game industry does anything like this. There's a there's one game called War Chest that uses poker chips, but like nothing to the degree that Chip Theory does. Anyhow, Cloud Spire is an, another unique game because it's trying to be like a MOBA and like a um, what's that uh, like a tower defense video game. It's like the video game uh, or the board game equivalent of a tower defense or a MOBA, like a League of Legends or like a Plants vs Zombies style what's in a moba not in <laughs> is it like an amoeba no. <laughs> not an e-moba it's a moba oh <laughs> <laughs> is that league a video of, game league, yeah that's what well, league of legends is a moba oh. uh it's a multiple multi multiplayer online battle arena is what moba stands for okay okay um kind of like video game gale yeah it's just like a subgenre of uh of like a video game kind of thing like a re- real time strategy type of thing okay. okay so you've you've never played or heard any of those i know but to the listeners out there you probably know what a moba is if you've been into video games in the last few years again league of legends is the big one league of legends is the game that mechs versus minions is based off of Ooh, i love mechs versus minions now mechs versus minions is absolutely nothing like Le- league of legends <laughs> oh, okay. it's just in the league of legends universe and it uses things from that anyhow cloud spire is trying to simulate those kinds of games and in my opinion, it does it fantastically. fantastically. Fantastically or fantastic? It does it fantastic. It does it I don't fantastically. Know if fantastically. Is that a word? Fantastically. Fantastically. Fantastic. It does it fantastic. It does it fantastically. I'm going to say fantastically. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, it does it really well, I believe. So when I first heard about this on Kickstarter, since I love chip theory, I just auto backed it. But. I was kind of disappointed because I'm not a big fan of tower defense games. I don't really like that MOBA style. I don't think it's kind of, I don't think it's that fun. It just kind of bores me. So I was kind of bummed when this first hit uh, Kickstarter. And, but again, I backed it anyway because I trust this company because they're freaking amazing. And so when I, I, it got here, I set it up and learned it. And holy freaking cow. <laughs> this game is so good. It is so good. It makes me love tower defense. Uh, the towers in this game are called spires. So real, real quick, the theme of the game is everybody, uh, there's like a bunch of races and factions in the world and they live uh, up in the sky on these floating islands. And what keeps these islands floating is this resource called source. And for some reason, the source in the world is kind of running out. And so all these factions of the world are starting to fight over source so they can be the ones that you know control and uh, i guess stay afloat in the world or something so they're all kind of battling for this source so the whole goal of the game is you are trying to take out uh your opposing enemy faction or factions so it plays to four players come competitively there's a two player cooperatively and it also like most all chip theory games there's a solo version which i think is th- is my favorite honestly and so basically what you're doing is you have units and you're stacking these units up on the on your main player board. You're spending the source, which is like the currency in the game, to build these spires, which are towers. And you're sending out your minions and your heroes on the board to go after your opponent's spires and your opponent's HQ. I can't remember what the actual thing is called. I think it's like their headquarters. Mm-hmm. And if you kill that, you win. If they kill you, they win. When you kill enemies and their spires, you collect more source to build more enemies and minions for you. And the cool thing is like a tower defense, when, you're, when your minions go on the board, they kind of go on rails. 
And if you don't know what board games board or video gaming terms, like rails means you're not really moving them. They're on like a, like a, a track that they will go on. Uh, that, that doesn't really make it any clearer, does it? So basically the, the, the game has a predetermined route that your minions will follow. You don't really get to move them yourself, right? So if I declare Natalie is the person I'm going to attack this round, I send out my minions, and they will go on a certain path to get to Natalie. And that's the only path they're going to take. I have very slight modifications I can make to that. But they're just going to, I'm just going to send wave after wave of these minions at Natalie and hope to kill her before her spires or her towers kill me or her minions kill me first. And so we just kind of do this for wave after wave until one of us is dead. It was just the two of us playing, and that person is the winner. And there's so much to love about this system. It is, I mean, first of all, it's ship theory. So it's an overproduced, beautiful monstrosity. <laughs> it's so, the table presence is off the charts. I took a picture and posted it on Instagram, and it got like 300 and some likes immediately. And I don't, that's not because of me. That's because that game looks freaking amazing. And people see that and they're like, what is that? I need to, I need to know what this is. Because the, the Kickstarter version I got comes with these like miniatures and the, so these spires, like 3D spires are on the, on the board. And the board is made up of a bunch of neoprene mats, hex mats. And they're, the colors on them are so beautiful and lush, right? I mean, yeah, you don't like really the game nice. too much, but how amazing does it look? Oh, yeah, it's right? gorgeous. And like all chip theory games, this is heavy, deep, complex. It is not something you can just set up in a half hour and, and then play in an hour it's not that's not going to work <laughs> there's a ton of terminology that you're going to have to continually reference over and over and over again until you finally remember what everything does and even then you still are going to be referencing things back and forth oh what does this do this is different oh this guy has this does that trigger before this or after this and so i can see people not liking the game because of that, it's not for the casual gamer. It's for a hardcore gamer who's going to get into it. You have to upfront know that you're going to be spending a lot of front end time figuring out how things work. But if you put that investment in and care enough to to do that work, you're the the game is going to reward you in droves. It's just going to give to you. It's just <laughs> so satisfying to me, especially the solo game. Because uh, you're just going through a campaign in the solo game. You're playing every faction, basically, over and over and over. And you have... So I said the minions go on rails. You have a ton of... A ton of... Um, what's the word? Uh, sway over what happens. You know, just because they go on rails, you still have a million decisions to make on how they come out. Do you stack them on top of each other? Do they come out as individual units? Do you go and attack that minion or do you attack that spire? Do you you know, explore and try to kill this guy to get more source to build more spires first? Or do you build up this spire with more attack values or more defense so your enemies can't kill it? What do you spend your source on? How do you best achieve the goals? And oh my gosh, the game is so good. <laughs> Natalie, I know you don't like it, but let's hear your thoughts on why. <laughs> well, I know you played solo first and then we played a two-player cooperative game and then we played a two-player competitive game and the first game we played the cooperative game um i the only the thing i didn't really like about it during that game well i know one i know we kind of played it one part of it wrong but i just felt like i was not really contributing much i wasn't really doing much i'd like move my guy you know look at a landmark and then my turn was over you know and then you'd go and then two other um factions had to go that we were like competing against and i don't know it was just like a little bit boring for me yeah too much downtime too much well, downtime and then um the next night we played what pvp is that what that's right that's the term <laughs> um and i was like i was like okay i'm gonna try to get into this and i don't know i'm not i don't i wouldn't say it's a bad game i could tell like it's probably a great game it's just not my kind of game the it's not a Natalie ass game. No, it's not. It's a Dave Madigan ass and game. I tried. You hear that, Dave Madigan? Yeah. We got to get you involved because this is a you ass. I game. tried, but I so it just did not click with me. I just didn't get it. I was making like terrible moves, terrible decisions. I feel like I died like so fast. It took. We only played two waves. Yeah, of four. Of four, and it 
each wave probably took an hour or so and the set at the end of the second wave because i played so terribly i'm sure like my health was 10 and you got it down to one you know so yeah, I was, like basically HQ. dead but you know and there was a lot of things where like um you know i spent my what is that stuff source. i spent my source on something and then i didn't even like use it or i spent it on something and i should have been on something else or well, i didn't do you know. think part of that was just your first probably you know, first rodeo yeah i mean maybe if i played it more i'd get it more and it would be more fun but it was a it was a rough play and i was just i had no idea what i was doing and that happens a lot in a lot of games you know you start off with no idea and then you kind of like figure it out as you go this one i was just like ah, i i'm sorry you know I just yeah don't. it was a bummer because she and didn't I like feel, it and I, I was so, so excited for it now i'm like i'm not who am i gonna play it well, with Well, luckily now? he likes playing it solo and yeah that's good there are you know a few of your friends that you think you would really like this which makes me feel a little better and i would give it another chance but ooh, it was a rough one for me i think it's just not my style yeah I'm it's, it's very sh- it's very dudes on a map euro game yeah it's very dudes on a mappy kind of game it's not really a, it's not a euro game at all chip theory doesn't do that kind of stuff they are very thematic and very like theme over everything and they make they, they put all the rules in that match the theme and it works out awesomely. It's yeah. very good, but it's uh, it's very and I had a few dense. like bad luck things like my had a few bad rolls where I would try to attack you or is that what it was? Yeah, you don't really like luck. Yeah, and then um, I had that one hero or whatever it was that you like roll if, if like you you put him in the game and before you like move him or play him you roll a die and if it rolls a five or a six then he's just out and of course the very first time i play him i roll a five or six and i was he was out yeah so, like, I, you know it's just stuff like that and i was just like ah this is not going yeah well. it was just frustrating <laughs> yeah and then everything went wrong well let's talk about a game then that you did love so she didn't <laughs> do too well at cloud Spire. but this next game she beat the living snot out of everybody <laughs> and this game is orange nebula's vindication I got this on Kickstarter. Again, a lot of things are on Kickstarter. I got this on Kickstarter a couple weeks ago, and I was re- I've was i been really excited about it because it is, it has, it's a kind of game that is going to tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people because it's kind of a hybrid. It's kind of a Euro Ameritrashy hybrid, even though it's really mostly Euro. The theme is very Ameritrash. It's very thematic. And, and I mean, you, looking at the game on the table, you see miniatures, you see dice, you see monsters that you're fighting. And you are fighting monsters and you're rolling dice mm-hmm. and you're, you got miniatures that can come out onto the board and you could be fighting dragons. But the game is Euro. The game is strategy. The game is cube pushing. Right. right? It's not all about fighting monsters. That's just a tiny piece so of it. So let's talk about Vindication. Vindication is basically we are all... Uh, a bunch of dirty scoundrels. We are the guilt wor- ridden the, scumbags. W- yeah, we're guilt ridden. Is it scumbags? We're yeah. guilt ridden scumbags. We are the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low. We're murderous, treacherous bastards. <laughs> and bastardettes, I'm sorry, you know, just to be fair. And so what happens <laughs> oh is we God. all get thrown overboard. We're like all on a ship, and our compatriots throw us overboard. They're like, goodbye, you s- lazy scumbags. And we wash up. All four of, or I have to say, there's four of us playing because there wasn't the game we played. We all wash ashore on an island, like a remote island, and we happen to be found by one companion. We each have a different companion that finds us and says, "Hey, you know, I'll, I'll help you throughout the world." And so, what we need to do is explore this island and and regain our honor and turn into upstanding. Human beings, or what was it? What respectable is it? human respectable beings. human beings, right? <laughs> we need to vindicate ourselves, hence vindication. And the way you do that is through Euro mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be exploring this island and bringing out tiles, which sounds Ameritrashy, right? Sounds like the Exploration X in the 4X game, uh, and it kind of is, I suppose, because there's a bunch of tiles. But these tiles, they basically, when you activate them, they let you put cubes out onto one of these six. Um, spheres of the board and each of these spheres that you put cubes on has an attribute right so mm-hmm. there's like strength and uh vision vision knowledge, and knowledge and inspiration thank you i'm not trying to keep wanting to say integrity inspiration so those are the three inspiration knowledge and strength those are the three base ones and then you can take if so you start everybody starts with one cube in each of those spheres if you want on a free action on your turn you can take 
um, two of those and turn them into a super, like a different one. There's three different ones that you can all. So basically, inspiration and strength, strength. will turn into courage. Yeah. Um, and, or you could take inspiration and knowledge and turn it into wisdom. Or you could take knowledge and strength and turn it into vision. vision. Okay, so those are the harder resources to get. And when you get resources of one of these attributes, you could spend them at these tiles to get cards. And the cards give you victory points and special abilities, and they let you do cool stuff. For instance, on the courage space, when you get two cubes, you make two cubes of courage. Remember, you make courage by strength and in inspiration. Mm -hmm. Once you get two cubes in there, you can go to the gaping maw tile and fight <laughs> a monster. And when you fight a monster, you roll dice to see if your champion or companion that you get dies. And where do you get companions? You get those from three of the, from some of the other spaces on the board. And so that's basically what you're doing. You're manipulating these spheres to put cubes out to, to go to tiles and do the action of the spheres to get you cards. And the cards give you points in different ways. They give you spe some cards give you special abilities that let you have cool that let you do cool stuff throughout the game. Some cards are just monsters that basically just give you victory points and ways to get victory points at the end of the game. Every um, one of those attributes has its own color, and so you are also doing a set collection thing. So if you have the most of one color attribute card at the end of the game, you get a mastery tile in that color, and that of course gives you victory points. And it's just, it's, there's a lot to take yeah, in. There's, there's a lot, lot to do. You need to do a lot of things. You can increase your movement and that gives you victory points. You can um, get, when you, when you get honor, which is victory points, you get so much honor and then you basically can turn yourself from a guilt ridden scumbag into a respectable human being. And that gives you victory points and also gives you an ability to get more cubes, to go onto the board, to do more stuff, to get more cards, to get more points. <laughs> oh, there's a cool player board that you have. And this player board kind of has like a Terra Mystica Power Bowl, mm, yeah. you know, like the situation going on. So you have eight cubes in your potential bowl, eight cubes in your influence, influence bowl, and two cubes in your constitution? Conviction? Some conviction bowl. So the influence is the middle bowl, and that's basically your economy. You're basically taking cubes from influence and putting them onto these... Uh, attribute board uh, spheres onto the board, and that's how you're getting cubes. And then you have, but you have eight cubes in your in your potential bowl, and your potential bowl is useless until you move them over into influence. And how do you do that? You do that by doing other actions that come out on these tiles on the board. And so once you get all the cubes moved from your potential to your influence, and you have 25 points, you can then become a respectable human being. Which I was the only one that did. Yep, you were. And I got last place. Nice guys finish last. <laughs> and I got... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the game is so thinky and deep and awesome. Because like I said, a friend of mine, uh, Dave, who typically loves thematic dudes on a mappy kind of games, Ameritrashy games, there's something for him because this is a Euro style game. Um, but it's got a ton of theme and a ton of cool stuff to look at and handle. And that's what he loves. He loves looking at the games and, and, and handling the components. And if it looks amazing to him, that's one of the visceral things that excites him about gaming. And this game has that for him. And then Natalie, we just talked about with Cloudspire, doesn't really go much you know, as much for the dudes on a mappy, you know, miniature style stuff. That's not really her thing. Uh, where it is with Dave, but this game's mechanisms are very Euro and very crunchy and very, you know, how do I manipulate this to turn it into that to get me these points and which points are going to be the most, but the best for me. And how do I manipulate my guy on the board to get me in the best situation to get these points? And so it's got something for her, you know, and they're kind of opposite ends of the gaming spectrum and, and this kind of game brings them together and they can have a, a good time playing it. So I thought the game was fantastic, even though I got last place, which I did. I still had an amazing time because I was, you know, one or two turns away from going all the way into second place, I thought, mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't like I was stymied the whole time. And I knew what I, I knew that, you know, in the next play, I, I would want to try something different. And I had a really good time. I thought it was good. I would give it an eight, maybe after that first play. So Natalie, what did you think of Vindication? Uh, I also had a really good time. I liked it a lot. At the beginning, I was a little nervous because it was pretty rules heavy um, it seemed like it was going to be very heavy and it was, but not more like thinky than heavy, I guess. And, you know, at the beginning I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what to do. I had trouble. Like, I mean, the hardest part, honestly, w was having trouble, like remembering like 
the names of the actions and what they meant to make sure that I did all the actions I can do because there's not like a certain order or anything that you do the action like first you do this then you do this there's just like here's the ones you can do do them and, you know and so we we're constantly like okay I did this and this you know what do I have left to do on this turn to make sure I got all my actions you don't want to like skip an action when you could have done it um so I had I kept having to at the beginning read what the actions meant a lot um, but then once I got the hang of that, it was going a lot smoother. Um, I mean, it was definitely a learning play. I felt like there was, you know, a lot of things that I would have done differently the next time, but I'm excited to try again because I liked it a lot, you know, like setting myself up better on the board because the tiles that come out are, um, random, you know, and so the board will change every play and, you know, there's certain things that I needed to get to. Um, that I just wasn't in a place to get to and there was a um, there was like a card we got at the beginning that kind of gave us like a end game points like an end game goal yeah it's a secret objective like, yeah a secret objective that kind of gave me a path to go on but so I was like really focused on that but I was like struggling to get where I needed to go to get what I needed to do there and um, but I really enjoyed it I thought it was a really good game I know that we played with two expansions. One of them we did not end up using, or we, you know, we didn't get to yeah, actually the dragon. play. We didn't fight the I know dragon. the dragon. Oh. We were like one cube away from fighting the dragon, Gosh, but I then to the do game that. ended. One thing about it, it too is that is actually like shorter than you'd think. Like one of the hard parts about it was, you know, there's so much to do and it's so thinky. But the end game, like the ways that the game ends, like it could end quickly. Yeah, so there's these and cards so you never that come know. out, and there's end game, they're end game conditions. Yeah, and so there's two at the beginning of the game, and if you trigger either one of those just by playing the game, then the game will end. And right. then as you're playing the game, there's these coins that are on the honor track, and as soon as one person eclipses one of those coins, they take the coin, and another card from that deck comes out, and so that's now another way for the game to end, mm-hmm. and that can happen like three or four times throughout the yeah, game, and the so game... all of a sudden, oh, oh no, the game's over, it and did... so that that happened actually. Right, it did actually end from one of like the additional cards we picked up, not like the original cards that were flipped over at the beginning of the game. There was another uh, expansion that we played. I don't remember what it was called, which is basically the reason that I won because I'm the only one who. Yeah, the guild, the monuments and guild. I think the guilds and monuments. Yeah, I just kind of got a little bit lucky. I had, I was in a position where I was like able to basically fulfill that at the very end of the game and it gave me like 15 points plus a bunch of like other bonus points which like shot me ahead of everybody cool. and i won the game um we i think we figured out if if i didn't do that i probably would have got second place maybe first because i probably would have done like other actions to get more points um other than doing that but it was really fun i really enjoyed it in the middle of the game before I even knew I was going to win, I know that it was a good game because I kept, I was excited about it. I kept thinking like, I'm having so much fun. This is so fun. I like this game. I want to ask everybody how, yeah. they're, <laughs> they're like how they're, what they're thinking about it. And yeah, I liked Vindication. That's cool. I think you would like Vindication a lot if you're into strategy games that are, you know, really heavy and thinky. And I think you would like this game, even if you are more into Ameritrashy games. I still think you would. there's something for you. I don't think you would like this game if you are not keen on a lot being thrown at you, right? There's, like, a lot of decisions to make, a lot of points to consider on your turn. And Natalie brought up a good point of you have all these actions, and you could get locked up going, okay, I don't know what to do first. Which one do I do? And then I kind of wish there was like a tracker that you could like put down. You know what I mean? That would say like, okay, I've done move. Yeah. Okay, boom. Now I can look at this little player board here and see at a glance what I've done and what I haven't yeah. done. But I, I feel think, like that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think you would like this game if you are into strategy games and you are also into uh, thematic experience. I don't know. There's a lot for everybody in this game. I was going to start with Vindication and, and do like a, I think if you like this kind of game, you'll like it. And if you, if you don't like this kind of game, you won't, but it's hard to 
Yeah, it's kind of got a lot of stuff. It's kind of got a lot it. for everybody. So again, I think it's it's it, it's kind of complex, and it's a little bit of a head scratcher at first. It's not super simple, right? It's no, not like a game you're just going to be not. like, oh, this clicks super easily. It's it's a game that it's there's a there's kind of a steep learning curve, I think, to it. Like I would say, I didn't really totally grok it until it was too late. I kind of was like, why am I doing so bad? And then I realized, oh, it's probably because of this. It's like, oh, well, the game's going to be over soon. Mm -hmm. So I need another play, right? So the learning curve is a little bit steep. But if you, again, if you're willing to, if you don't like a game that has a lot of stuff, you're not going to like this game because it's a table hog yeah. and there's a lot of crap that goes into it. And it's overwhelming. When you look right. at, the, at the board, you're like, I don't know, what, what am I supposed to do? And I typically don't like that in games. One of the reasons I kind of tend to shy away or I have shied away lately and recently of the thematic kind of games is because they're typically very component dense. They have a ton of chrome, which is basically just a bunch of stuff that services the theme and it can get very, very fiddly when there's like 30 decks of cards. I don't like that. That's typically like, that's just too much. Mm -hmm. And this game does have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of decks to deal with. There's a lot of cards. There's a lot of tokens. There's a lot of miniatures. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff all over the board. So if you don't like that kind of a thing and get overwhelmed with that easily, then I guess you wouldn't like this game. But I think most people, I think, will like this one. So that's Vindication by Orange Nebula. Very good game. All right, so the next game, a completely different animal from Vindication is the game called King's Dilemma. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. King's Dilemma. So this one came out of Gen Con. It was pretty highly lauded, I would say. Uh, a lot of people were, <clears throat> people by people, I mean reviewers, were excited about it. They had it as like number one on their most anticipated Gen Con list. And so mm -hmm. that made me excited for it. And I, when I read about it, I got even more excited because it's not only like a legacy style game, but you're negotiating in this game and it's narrative heavy and there's like envelopes to open and storylines to go through and, you know, kind of choose your own adventure stuff. And that sounded so awesome. So I pre-ordered it, got it at Gen Con. I don't think it's out for a while because okay. I, I, yeah, I don't, maybe not. I don't know. Actually, I have no idea how long it's going to be, but I know it's not out yet because I've seen nothing about this game anywhere. So you're hearing this wow. first, sweet gamers. You're hearing it first here. King's Dilemma. We played it over the weekend, and it was a fantastic experience. So in this game, we are all houses. Uh, kind of think of think Game of Thrones here, right? We're all like different houses of this kingdom, and we are advisors to the king. We are like the close friends of the king, all of us houses. So he kind of trusts us to make all the decisions for the realm. And so that's what we do. We make the decisions for the realm, <clears throat> right? We're playing this game. And you're writing the name of your of your house on your house board. So it's legacy. So you're going to be yep. stickering the board and writing on cards and writing on your thing and altering the game permanently. I think uh, they say it takes about 15 play sessions to play the whole game. So about 15 hours because each play session is about an hour, mm -hmm. which is kind of a perfect time, I think. 15, yeah. 15 games is a pretty decent amount of games. Yeah, I mean, it's a high price sure. tag. It's like 80 bucks. But if you think about it, 80 divided by 15, you know, hours, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty decent good deal. Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. And, and how many games are you going to play 15 times? Not that many. That's mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest with you. So I, I understand the hater, the legacy haters, but I'm also kind of like, come on guys, I'll bet you have 500 games sitting on your shelf that you haven't played three times that you say is your favorite game. <laughs> right. So to play a game 15 times and be done with it for 80 bucks is a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. So the way this game works is you each pick a house and you write your name of the house. You make it up, you know, write it on there. And then there's this deck of cards that comes out and these are the dilemma cards. And basically one of the players reads the card and the card gives you a choice. Because remember, we're the houses of the realm. And so the example I'll use is, uh, this is the example I told you and I told Dave <laughs> earlier before and it's not even a real example. But this is, exact, this is an example of something you'll find, okay? You are wandering down, or uh, you're, you're, you're in the realm or whatever, and a thief comes in, or a guy comes in, and you see gold coins flashing in his pocket. And it's basically, you know, what do you do? Do you kill the thief and take the money for, for the realm to, you know, increase the thing? Because you know he's a thief, so he doesn't deserve to live. He's going to, or maybe he's a murderer. He's a convicted. You know, you know, he's, you know, you just watched him murder somebody. Do you take the coins for yourself and give it to the realm? Or do you turn the guy into the police and then. You know, the money goes somewhere else, whatever. So then we all have to vote. All, all of us at the table have to vote. Okay, what do we do? Do we vote to send him to jail or do we just kill him and take his money? If we kill him and take his money, that's going to eliminate the, a storyline that may have, 
you know, spurned with him for being alive. So there's cards that are in envelopes that we may never see because we all made the choice to kill him. Why would we choose one thing or the other? There's a couple different reasons. One, morality. <laughs> you know, we might not want to kill the lady who's going to give us the golden map, but we might <laughs> if our secret objectives, because we all have a secret agenda card, if our secret agenda calls for certain things to happen. And so every all all four of us are working together to for the good of the realm, but it's not a competitive it's not a cooperative game, it's a competitive game. So we are also working for ourselves. So you have this dichotomy of decisions where you're like, okay, I don't want to kill this woman <laughs> or to kill this guy and take his money because killing is wrong, but my secret agenda card says I need money. The realm needs money. So if I kill this guy, we'll get money and that'll help me win. So now I have to decide what to do. And so you vote kind of cosmic encountery where you're either saying I or nay, or you could pass. So the, you know, the vote says if you vote I, which is to kill the guy, then your money, the realm's money will go up. Okay. But the influence over the realm will go down because, you know, the people the, the public has seen that the realm has just put this guy to yeah. death and stolen his money so you know we are not gaining favor of the public but the realm will get money so if my agenda card says i need money you know to be in this certain spot then i'm gonna be like okay i'm gonna vote i and when you vote you put a certain amount of tokens that you have behind your player screen on and that's like the strength of your vote right so if i put three tokens out for i i'm saying okay three that's how much I want to say, you know, I want this to happen. The next person, Dave, to my left, he's like, what? You want to just kill this guy? No, we need to let the authorities handle it and take <laughs> care of it. And we do not murder people in this kingdom, you know? And so we're like, you're kind of role playing in that way. And so he's like, no, nay, I'm going to vote nay. And he puts four tokens out on nay. So if it were to end right there, the nays would win because they have four to my, th to the eyes three, right? But then everybody else gets to keep voting. And you can bargain with people, you know, you can bl or you can bribe them because you have money behind your screen too. You can be like, how about I give you $2, Natalie, and you vote my way. And Natalie will consider that. And then Dave's like, well, no, 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 wait a minute. How about I give you $3 to vote this way? And then, you know, so she has to then consider that. And it's just, that's a really, it's created some incredible moments yeah. in that game. And so that's the game. Basically, you're just drawing cards. It presents you with a dilemma. You talk amongst yourselves and vote on it, and then resources move up and down throughout the game, which you know kind of messes with your points. There's secret achievements you can get throughout the throughout the campaign as certain things happen. You're checking stuff off on your box. You're getting prestige points. You're getting these crave points, and we don't really know what all of it or any of it does yet. But we all I know is we had a blast playing it. It's not a deep, thinky, strategic game. This is all narrative and um, what's the you know, we're all talking, interacting. Yes, we're interacting, interacting in this game. It's very interactive. If you are the type of gamer who does not like to wheel and deal, and there, I know there are gamers out there because there's a lot of friends of mine who don't like this, who don't like to wheel and deal, get in each other's face and argue, you know, for your point, you're not going to like this game. If you're a fan of games like The Resistance and games where you have to just be really talky and, and say your piece and, you know, maybe even lie a little bit to get what you want, this is going to be a game I think you're going to really enjoy. If you love narrative in games, you're going to like this game. If you don't like just sitting and reading a lot of text and hearing a story, you just want to get in to play the game and the mechanisms, this is not a game for you because this is not a mechanism heavy game. This is a theme, story, and uh, interaction heavy game and I found it to be juicy and amazing and I cannot wait to play the next scenario Natalie what do you think of King's Dilemma uh, like you said I thought it was so fun I had a blast playing this game this um was our favorite game of the night for all four of us um, that played games that night it was so much fun you were just saying about how it was like more about the story and the narrative which it was but a nice thing was there wasn't even too much text you know you'd read like a little card and then you'd go on to the next dilemma and you'd take your vote and talk and then you'd read a little you know scenario about what happened based on how the vote went and you know so it wasn't too lengthy you're not just sitting there forever listening to this like huge long story you're interacting more than listening to um the narrative but oh my gosh we had so much fun and i'm not even one that's typically into negotiations it's mostly i guess like lords of vegas where there's monetary negotiations that's not what i'm into but this one was different because it's like a moral 
dilemma. And I thought that was so much fun. And what was even more fun is that I was voting not based on like what I would do as a person, but what my thank God because house. you were the most evil, <laughs> evil person when you were voting. Kill the bitch is basically what Natalie was saying every single time. Give me the money and kill her. Well, I and have... then the card is like one out of five people survived, and we're like, oh, they're Natalie, like you're terrible. The blood is on your hands. What are you doing? <laughs> what I mean, it was so fun. It's funny because like I got this house. I didn't read it. I just like picked it based on the picture on the front, you know. So I read what my my family is like and they're pretty they're pretty greedy all they care about is gold and yeah. and being wealthy and <laughs> and it was i was had a lot of personal dilemmas because the card we had at the beginning that tells you how you get points conflicted with the my house personality and so there was a lot of times where i'm like i don't know what to do do i go for the points so i can try to win and get the most points at the end of this game or do i follow like my storyline and vote that way and so there was a lot of times that i didn't really know what to do so i did have a lot of dilemmas in this game i felt terrible because i had to make a lot of terrible decisions there was a couple times where i was like the tiebreaker i had the gavel and um (laughs) sometimes you just look at me and i just like forget everything (laughs) (laughs) because i'm so dreamy (laughs) but i had the gavel and and um i had to make a decision don't give too much away that's all right no spoilers here that's so this game is amazing it's by horrible games designed by lorenzo silva and halmer hach i know they've done other games Uh, i was just listening to rado runs through and he was talking about some other games that they've a bunch of games that these people have been involved in. I think Potion Explosion is one of them. So they they have like games. These guys are good, and I also to understand that they hired like an actual story writer, and the guy spent three to three and a half years writing all the stories for this game. And so, don't you think that the first game we played, it was the narrative was really interesting. Yeah, it was like good good kind of stuff. And so, basically, the way each game ends is either the king will abdicate, which, Natalie, what does that mean? Uh, Renounce their throne. Okay. Or he'll die. (laughs) And then the winner of that, whoever plays, you know, when you're playing that game, the winner of the game, it was me in this first game, Mm -hmm. gets to kind of basically the the new king comes from his family. So the new king for our next play session is from the Youngbloods, (laughs) right? House Youngblood all the way. And so then we'll play the next thing, and it's just going to add on top of itself, right? We put stickers on the board that add to the next games. We're checking things off that are going to eventually score us points for our secret objectives, and we're going to get stronger and more powerful. And I cannot wait to see where the story goes. And it's just so cool. King's Dilemma, fantastic game, horrible games. When it comes out, everybody should grab a copy of this if you're one of those people who likes the kind of game that this is. How come you just pulled it out? I wanted to see who the designers were. Oh. And who made it. Like, you know, for Cloudspire, I know it's chip theory. Yeah. You know, that's easy. Yeah. And I know Vindication's Orange Nebula, but King's Dilemma. This is one of the games I was most excited for that we bought at Gen Con, and it's probably my favorite one. I mean, besides like Medium and Team 3, little ones like that. Big box game. I agree. I'm I'm really impressed with this one. This is the the Gen, my game of Gen Con so far. Agreed. It was so fun. We laughed a ton. We were arguing. This is when we got disengaged. I took <laughs> yeah. a deal. Natalie took a bribe. I took and a bribe. I thought she was on my team full stop. And Dave and Jeff were just like, how about three coins and you can vote my way? And she was like, yeah, okay, money, please. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you didn't even give me a chance to rebut. I could have given you more money. And she was like, oh, oops. And I'm like, oh. And it was so, yeah. <laughs> Give me the ring back, woman. And it was it was funny stuff. So this game elicits a lot of that, a lot of emotion. I mean, you know, it's it can probably make you people upset if you're not into this kind of game. So you have to know going in, there's going to be a lot of, you know, bickering and kind yeah, of and like it definitely depends on the group you play with you have to play with people who you know are all in it for fun yeah and the two guys we played with were <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we love playing games with them so jeff brought over uh point salad from aeg this was a big gen con hit it's kind of a, a take on the whole point salad mechanism do your jingle everybody point salad 
Yummy, yummy. That one? Point yeah. Sal- That's from the Wiggles. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yummy, 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 yummy point salad. If anybody knows the Wiggles, that would make sense to you. <laughs> I have small children, so they watch the Wiggles. <laughs> or they used to. Anyhow, so point salad is a riff off of Stefan Feld's games, where everybody calls those games point salads, which is essentially you get points for everything. Everything you do in the game gives you points. You know, so it's kind of like a salad bar, I guess people will talk about it like, like, oh, some of this, some of that, some of that, some of that, some of that. Yeah. So somebody decided to make a game based on that that name, Point Salad. There's been a lot of instances of that. Somebody, uh, there's there's this thing that everybody talks about called Trading in the Mediterranean. And so some guys made a game called Trading in the Mediterranean that turned out to be trading Trade on the Tigris. So people do this kind of stuff a lot. And I never really take notice of those kinds of games because I'm always like, well... You know, like somebody made a game called Deck Building, the Deck Building Game. Really? It's about building decks, which John <laughs> oh, like Parker could take part decks. in because he actually did build a deck. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, I, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's funny, but I'm not really interested in playing that because it just seems like a joke. Right. Right. So when I saw Point Salad, I was kind of like, this is just, this just seems like a joke. They're just making fun of Point Salads and, you know, how good could the game really be? So it got a lot of buzz at Gen Con, and Jeff really wanted it, and so he didn't get it at Gen Con because I don't think we could get... The line was, like, way too long. Yeah. So he found it um, a week or so after Gen Con at that friendly local game store. Shout out to RIW Games in Livonia, Michigan. Fantastic store. So Jeff found it there, picked it up. He's been playing it. He told me he liked it, and so he, him and Dave came over, and we kind of had, like, a little birthday game day for me yesterday, and that's where we played all these games we're talking about other than Cloudspire. And so he busts out Point Salad. And I have to tell you, I thought Point Salad was really good. I was actually kind of surprised that I liked it as much as I did. So all you're really doing, there's a deck of cards. And on one side of the card is a vegetable. On the other side of the card is a way to score points for vegetables. And you're only either using one or the other. And so the way that it comes out, there's three little decks of cards. And you flip up two rows of three. So each column of each deck of cards has two cards underneath it so you have two rows of three cards and those three those two rows of three cards i'm sorry you have three rows of three cards the bottom two rows are vegetables on the vegetable side and the top row is on the score point side so basically face down face up kind of thing right on your turn all you either do is you either take two vegetable cards from those two rows of three or you take one score point card (laughs) and put it in front of you at the end of the game which it lasts until the the cards run out which is about 15 minutes or so Mm -hmm. at the end of the game you just look at all the cards that are in front of you that score points and you evaluate those cards one at a time based on all the vegetable cards you took and you can use your vegetables for like multiple you can use the same vegetables for every score card that you have and you're using those score cards for your own vegetables only you're not using them for anybody else although there are some that say if i have the most carrots then i get this many points or if i have the least amount of cabbage i get this many points and you are comparing those to other other players but another player won't score points for the least amount of carrots if you have that score card only you score those points mm-hmm. right and so it's really simple and i thought it was going to be a little too simple and just not very fun but i actually thought it was fun i had a good time with it and it is just a very simple little set collection kind of game where you're just trying to synergize your points. Like, for instance, I had uh, I, t- I, I took carrots and tomatoes and peppers, I think. Mm-hmm. And those were literally the only three vegetables I got. So I took I tried to get all scoring cards that only pertained to carrots, tomatoes and peppers. And I, I was able to make a cool little synergistic engine going. And I won the game on a tiebreaker, and I was able to cool, make a cool little engine going of cards that just give you points for carrots, tomatoes, and peppers. And it was really fun. But a lot of times you can't really. So the one thing I would say is you can't really plan a lot in this game because there's, you know, it comes to my turn and I'm like, oh, I want that scorecard. Or I'm sorry, on the, the turn after me, uh, you know, a card flips. I'm like, oh, I want that scorecard. It's gonna be good for me. But the odds of you getting that scorecard by the time it gets to your turn are very low. Because whenever you take vegetable cards below that scorecard deck, that scorecard now flips up and becomes a vegetable. Right. So you can't plan. It's very tactical. But that said, it was really fun. That wasn't a mark against it for me because the game is so short right. and quick. It takes 15 minutes. So you're not going to have this feeling all game where like, oh, I've gotten screwed and it's really yeah. frustrating because it ends so quick. And there's a ton of opportunities to get other cards. So that I thought Point Salad was good. Natalie, what did you think? I agree. I thought it was a good game too. It was like kind of like a perfect filler game. You know, at the end of the night, you want something a little lighter, a little quicker. 
Yep, cleanse the palate. Yeah. I liked it. I would have played it again. Mm-hmm. It was a very good filler game. I think if you like filler games, you would like this game a lot. I think if you're looking for anything a little meatier, you're not going to like this. I don't think you can really plan, so strategic value in this game is low, so I don't think you're going to find that here. Mm-hmm. It's really... But there. that said, there's value... It doesn't. The game doesn't just play itself. There's no. decisions to make. What What do you do? But I mean, a lot of it is kind of okay. I'm only able to do what I have right here in this here and now. You know, you can kind of strategize and say because I got this card right at the beginning that said I get two points for every carrot card. So I was like, okay, my my overall strategy is I'm going to get as many carrot cards as I can get, and also get as many scoring cards as I can get that also deal with carrots. Mm-hmm. And I realized that strategy. So you can strategize. It's just not super strategic because mm-hmm. it's just a little card game. But it's very fun, and that's called Point Salad by AEG. We also played Strike. I believe we've talked about Strike before. That game is so super fun. Holy crap, that game is fun, and I really wanted Jeff to play it because I've been t- I've been like pumping it up from for to him for a long Basically time made him buy it <laughs> yeah right i essentially kind of made him buy it telling him i was like you got to get this game you just have to it's just so amazing and so he bought it and we played it with him yesterday and i was kind of like nervous like oh god is he gonna have fun with it and he was like rolling x after x after x oh yeah and they kept coming out and i was like oh he's gonna hate it but i could tell he seemed like he was still like <laughs> he was he thought it was, it was like funny silly, yeah yeah he thought it was funny so <laughs> so we ended up playing more and he ended up winning and stuff and it was really fun we played that like six times yeah, I think yesterday we played it six times it and was really yeah funny. we had a little debate about how many times we played it. i'm pretty sure it was six <laughs> we also played six. nine tiles panic which i don't know if i've talked about before but that's a game from oink and it's kind of got like a chaosmos galaxy trucker mm-hmm. feel to it where you have nine tiles of your color and you can build those tiles in a... We did talk about it before? Yeah, because we played it with Jeremy. And so I feel like we talked about it. But Maybe we did. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe we did. No, I won't say too much more about it then. You can look it up on your own. It's called Nine Tiles Panic on Board Game Geek. It's by Oink Games. It's a fantastic little game. And another f- good filler game that's kind of... It's lighter than both Chaosmos and Galaxy Trucker, so it's easier to get to the table. Not that those games are hard to get to the table at all, yeah. but it's easier to get to the table, and it's a nice filler game that plays, I think, up to five. So it's it's pretty it's a pretty good game. I really like that. So those are all the games we've been playing over the last between the last episode and now. And one thing before we get into the new game Ooh. of the evening, I wanted to talk about uh, this new YouTube series that we found. Oh yeah. Um. So I heard about this through Rado. I think other people have been hearing about it through the Dice Tower. And they've also contacted me after. And uh, they I saw them on Instagram, followed them on Instagram. I'll explain who it is in a second, I promise. I'll <laughs> I feed, know, I'll, like I'll feed you baby birds. It. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of preamble. And basically they want to do an interview with us. So we're going to interview these people pretty soon. Maybe, I'm not sure we'll do it next, you know, the next half episode we'll do is going to be their interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're called Meeple People. So look for Meeple People on YouTube. And they do, they've done one season, and it's kind of like a Bored with Life type style show, where basically it's a bunch of actors, and they, well, the show, okay, it's a bunch of, they're, they're, I, bet, I, I would say they're like, they're not like A-list actors, right? But Mm-mm. they're like actors. They're not yeah. just like like you, were, you me and Natalie like making a show. Like some friends who like Right, put they're like actual show. paid actors who were hired to play this group of friends, and they, the season one goes through this one night. It's a game night for one night. And the thing about it that's that's unique is every episode is only between like one and a half and three minutes long. And there's like 17 episodes in season one. And it just, it's basically, if you put everything together, it's like one half hour episode. It's like 22 to 26 minutes long total. Yeah. If you were to take out, you know, everything. Because it just goes through the beginning to the end of a game night. It is done so well. The production values are really high. It's written very well. It's very funny. Uh, it's very clever. It it's 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 good, right? I think it's oh, really yeah. good. I'm very really excited to talk to them and see what they how they came up with the yeah, idea. Yeah, I really and, enjoyed it. I thought it was funny, and it's like it's so short, and we watched the whole thing. You know, like you said, maybe 30 minutes, but I still like got into each of the characters. Yeah, me too. I've I've gone back and watched it a second and third time, and I I want to go back and watch it again. Yeah, I really I really think it's fun, and so um check it out if you haven't heard of it already. There, it's called Meeple People on YouTube, and you'll you'll see it right when you pull it up, and it's it's just a really cool show. So look f- uh, after you know go and watch that, and then you'll you can hopefully look forward to hearing us interview the people from yeah. Meeple People. I'm excited for that. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. So that's coming up. All right, let's jump into the new game we have for the evening. 
It's called Would You Rather. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, Natalie, to play wood, some Would You Rather? Sure. <laughs> oh, you <boy>. sound ready. <laughs> I never know what you're going to come up with. <laughs> I know. Well, again, I've been kind of doing a different game like every time. I know. And I don't know if that's good or bad, but I can tell you this. I'm having fun with it. So here we go. <laughs> Would You Rather. All right. So I got 10 questions for you okay. some gaming related some not oh boy. <laughs> and i came up with all of these except for one straight off the brain one of them was one that i knew from like a reddit post that oh. i wanted to ask you which is kind of <laughs> okay. funny but all the rest of them just straight off the brain for me actually one i might have even no i think i, I made all these up except the one okay so here we go would you rather everybody at home answer these as well <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with a light one. Would you rather, Natalie, Michelle, <laughs> never go to Gen Con again or never play Istanbul again? <laughs> you can either never go to Gen Con or never play Istanbul. Istanbul, if you guys don't know, it's one of it's in Natalie's probably top 3. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like one of her top 3 favorite oh, games of boy. all time. That's a rough one. And Gen Con might be in your top 3 conventions of all time. <laughs> yep. Seeing as you've only been to two. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, hmm. Well. Is that a thinker? Yeah, that's Good. a thinker. Good. Phew. I think that if I had to be realistic about it, I guess I would rather not play Istanbul. <gasps> wow. That's. I only <laughs> say that because, I mean, it is in my top three games, but... We just played it at Grand Con, but before that, I hadn't played it in, like, two years. Yeah, true. And okay. we have been having so much fun going to Gen Con, and it's, like, a big thing we do every year now. And so yeah, that would suck that's not my do that. Answer. Okay, so you'd rather never play Istanbul again. Okay. Wow, interesting. That's what makes me sad. I know. I don't want to do Well, that. that's the purpose of these. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Number two, would you rather play 100 games in a year that you like uh -huh. or only one game in an entire year that you love. You can only play one game that you love or would you play 100 games that you like? 100 games that I like. You'd better play 100 games. So quantity over quality. I feel like if I played only one game for an entire year, I'd get sick of it. No, no, you can only play it once. It's just one play. Oh. One play of a game that you like. Castle of Burgundy, you can play it and that's it. Or you can play games like, um, like Artemis Project 100 times. Like a hundred games, like Artemis Project. Oh, like but I play Artemis. Different games. Yeah, different. Yeah, they're yeah, different though. That. You still rather do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You said that was easy, huh? It's All only right, one well, game for an entire year. You. Yeah. That's not But it's like your favorite game. Uh, still not. Working. Okay. Hundred games. Hundred subpar games. Okay. Would you rather never watch TV again or never listen to music again? Oh man. Ever uh, again. Hmm. That All is right, a now, tough one. now this goes without saying. If there is music in the TV show, that's different. You know, yeah. you can still listen to right, the music like in the TV to show. Music but you know what I mean. You can't listen to headphones. music in your car. Yeah, you can't listen to music in the headphones. You can't listen to Spotify. You know, no guitar playing, nothing. Done. No music or no TV for the rest of your life. That's hard because I listen to a lot of music and I watch a lot of TV, and I enjoy both of those things. But. Right now, I would say I would rather not watch TV again. Okay. Damn, that's tough. Yeah, that's I tough. I think I'd probably say the same thing. I, yeah. Music is so awesome. Music is so great. And it's more versatile than TV. Yeah. Because you can listen to music in so many different situations. TV, right. you just got to be sitting in front of the couch watching TV. And like... But I there's some so... There's an amazing... There's like amazing I shows. Know, I love TV. But also lately, I've probably watched... I'm, been watching the least amount of TV that I've ever watched in my whole life. Okay. Which is like. Yeah, that's. We pretty still watch a lot of TV, so. <laughs> yeah, jeez, how much TV did you watch before? Holy cow! A lot. How many cameras were actually on you? <laughs> when I lived alone for two years, I watched a lot of TV. All right then. So TV, you'd rather you'd rather give up than music. I think okay. so. That's okay. That's a tough one too. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right. Would you rather play board games, but? You must be naked while you're playing them. <laughs> or play board games, but everyone else that you're playing with is naked. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, who are these people? <laughs> Everybody. So when we were just playing with you, me, Dave, and Mr. Mises, <gasps> all of us are naked. Or you're naked. Would you rather not have to see me naked playing every game? Or would you rather not have want people this to see you naked? This might be the toughest one yet. 
<laughs> oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. That's tricky. I mean, I don't want to be the only naked one, but then I don't want to you like, see like all the other people naked. With like naked, naked people. people. <laughs> Well, would the, like, table cover up their privates? <laughs> yes. The table will cover up. Well, I mean, because, like, they'd just be sitting at the table. But if they get up to do anything, you're going to see their privates. Oh, my God. Because they're just naked. I don't know what to say here. Yeah. You got to. Got to say something. This would you rather? Would you rather be naked playing board games? Or everyone else is naked playing board games? But what if I get cold? I don't know. <laughs> Stop playing the game. <laughs> you got to be naked playing the games. Um, turn the heat up, I guess. Get up. Walk to the thermostat so everyone can see. Turn it up and then get back and sit down because you're naked. I guess everyone else is going to be naked. Everyone else is going to be naked. Yeah. You're going to see some gross stuff, my lady. Also, occasionally you'll probably see something very attractive. <laughs> but it'll all be flaccid. Ew. Right. And dry. Anyway. All right. So <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> what? So you'd, wait, so you'd rather everyone else be naked. I guess so. You sure? No. Final answer. No. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna say yes. So I think on. I would rather everyone else be naked too. Yeah. Yeah. I that that's how that is how much I hate my own body. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> it's just yeah. You'd feel really insecure if you were the only naked one. True. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, the next one. Would you rather know with 100% certainty before the game even starts if you're gonna win or lose? So that might take some fun out of it. Right, mm-hmm. or you never know the final score even after the game's over who won or who lost. So we play the whole game, and at the end of it, you don't nobody you don't know if you won or lost. Or before the game starts, you know if you're going to win or lose. What would you rather do? Um, I think I would rather never know. Yeah, I think me too. I because it wouldn't take all the fun for out of me it. Is not like it's fun to win, you know, but. But I guess when I but but the whole point of the game, right? I mean, it's fun. It sucks to lose. It's fun to win. But the whole the, but the goal of the game is, yeah. is winning, right? You're trying to yeah. do as, as good. I don't you, really you'll know how that know. would work. What do you mean? Like to hide the score. Well, it's just, just a. I know it's just, it's just for a fun. for instance. Yeah, I'd say um, I'd rather not know the end score because it's never really been like that important to me. Okay. Yeah, I, I I can see it both ways because if I knew before I was going in that I was going to win, in a way it would make it at first anyway. After a while, it would be boring. Yeah. At first, it'd be like sweet, all the pressure's off now because I'm going to win, and then I can just enjoy the mechanisms of the game. Yeah, you know, so I can see that. Or if you're going to lose, I could see being like that it's sucking because you're like, well, I know I'm going to lose anyway, so maybe that entices you to try something different. Right. But if you if you don't know what you're going what it is at the at all at the end of the game, that also takes pressure off. Yeah. Because like okay, I'm just gonna play and do whatever I want, and it doesn't matter. But right. then it also kind of to the other side of that, it's like, then like what's the point? What's the point of playing if yeah. there's never there's, you don't know who the winner is? Okay, so you would rather not know the score. Yeah. All right. Um, I think this is number six. No, number seven. I like that this game has no right or wrong answer. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> oh, you're getting a score at the end. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> All right, number seven. Would you rather never play Castles of Burgundy ever again? Everybody, this is Natalie's favorite <laughs> game here, okay? Right? Would you say yeah. this is your favorite game of all time? Yeah, so. Would you never, would you rather never play Castles of Burgundy ever again, or you can play Castles of Burgundy as much as you want throughout your life. However, after every single time you play it, you throw up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, throwing up is pretty terrible. It's one of the worst things that I can think of that at, at, to do. It's maybe the worst thing. If I go through life and I don't throw up, I win. Do you think that if I threw up every time after I played it, I would end up not liking it? It would be like kind of like I associate the game with throwing up, and so like I don't like it anymore. That's for you to determine. I still think I'd throw up and play <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. All right. I get it. Yeah, because wouldn't it suck not ever playing again? But wouldn't it also be like, what are you going to play tonight? Castle of Burgundy? And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I guess Well, if so. I played it a lot, I could get real skinny. <laughs> you are real skinny. How skinny do you want to be? Ugh, you want to be a cell phone girl skinny? No. Just Ugh, gross. Okay. So if this was me, I would never play Castle Burgundy. Oh, <laughs> I'd probably never play much. board games again because that's how much I hate throwing up. Ooh. Throwing up is the worst I mean, thing I can think fun, of to do. But... All right. Would you rather be constantly so hot you're dripping with sweat, or would you rather just constantly be shivering from cold? 
So every day you're just down here and you're just like sweats pouring off and you're beating with so you're like wiping it yeah. away like ugh. Or would you rather just be like <laughs> I think I would rather be Even if it blankets on you're still shivering with coldness. <laughs> I know. Right. I'd rather be hot. Really? Yeah. I hate being cold is the worst. Being cold so much. I mean being hot and sweaty is very uncomfortable, uh-huh. but it's to me not as bad as just being like so cold you can't ever get warm and you feel like you just can't move. You're like, whole body is tense. Ugh, it's horrible. Ugh. Okay. <sighs> for me, there's nothing worse for me than being so hot. Yeah, I, I can't the opposite. sleep. Like when it's summer out yeah, and the, if the air conditioning's terrible. broken or something, there's not. I can't because you can't run away from it. Yeah. You know, I mean, in this scenario, it doesn't really, it's not the same, but if you were able to get some relief by covering yourself with a blanket, because whenever I'm cold, I can throw as many blankets on me as possible, and then I can get warm. But when you're hot, you can only take so much off. Yeah, but and, you said even with a blanket, you're so Well, I know, that's what I'm saying. In this scenario, yeah. it doesn't really I mean, make obviously, sense. both of them are terrible. I think I'd rather be cold. Oh, God, if I had to pick. Jeez, that's terrible. Okay, <laughs> number nine. And this is the one that I got from Reddit. <laughs> okay. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses what? or one horse-sized duck? 100 duck-sized horses? So the horses are a little duck-sized. Fight them? Yeah, you got to fight them. Or would you rather like, fight... Like, death? I don't know if you're killing them, but you gotta them? like. Well, if they're du- like punching them or kicking them, because I mean they're they're duck-sized. Or duck-size. one duck. Or one horse-sized horse duck. <laughs> <laughs> a duck the size of a horse. You gotta fight it. Or a hundred, mm-hmm. one hundred duck-sized horses. Okay, I'm getting kind of hung up on this fighting thing. Why? Like fine. How, okay, fine. Why would, would I you, fight okay, a fine. horse? What do you know? <laughs> this is what. Why would you play games nude? <laughs> Why would anyone else be nude? Why would you throw out? It's just these are hypotheticals, sweetheart. Okay. Would, would you rather, would kill be better for you, you sadist? Would you rather kill 100 duck-sized horses or kill one horse-sized duck? No. Basically, it's like, well, that do you think you answer. could take it? You know? Can yeah. you can can you fight off one? Would you rather, you know, have a chance to fight off 100 duck-sized horses? Yeah. And you could think like, okay, they're the size of a duck. They're easier. But there's 100 of them. Or would you rather fight off one horse-sized duck? So then it's like, okay, it's the size of a horse, but it's still a duck. Yeah. I don't know. I guess the horse-sized duck. I think I'd say the opposite. I almost said the opposite, but... A hundred is a little A hundred is a lot, and, like, I don't want to fight a hundred of them. And maybe you, if horses, there's a, Yeah, maybe too. if there's a hundred of them, you could funnel them, like, Thermopylae like and 300, and just, like, <laughs> fight one at a time yeah, and just kick true. them in the face. But ducks don't seem, like scary or like intimidating maybe it will when it's the size of a horse <laughs> yeah that's true holy cow i can just feed it sun chips <laughs> and bread because ducks <laughs> eat for free at some point <laughs> or you could just ride it around and <laughs> Ooh, it's flying at you yeah, though like at least the duck-sized horses aren't flying they're just running around yeah. and could they even hurt you really bad maybe if they're just all kicking you at yeah, once yeah but like they could they all like fire ants. swarm you e. all right so you'd rather fight the horse-sized duck. Sure, yeah. Okay, I think I'd go the other way. <laughs> All right, and then number 10. Here we go, the coup de gras. Mm. Would you rather eat for the next year? Every single thing that you eat is doused in mayonnaise for one year. Or nope. would you rather go to bed for one night, but you know in your bedroom there are three gigantic gigantic tarantulas in the room somewhere are you trying to give me nightmares (laughs) what would you rather do i thought i knew the answer when you said mayonnaise because that's the most disgusting thing ever but spiders in my bedroom is like my biggest fear i have major fear of them crawling into my orifices Yeah, these are rapist spiders, so they're going to crawl into every orifice <laughs> oh you want. <laughs> Seriously, every night I cover my ears with my hair in case a spider comes along and tries she to does. crawl in my she ear does. and plant eggs. Yep. Um, She's, hmm. yeah. Oh, my God. Incredibly afraid would of spiders. I, would I... I uh, you don't know where they are. You know you're going to bed, and then... Someone opens the door or something. You know, you know. At some point in the night, there's going to be three. There's three spiders in the room. Do you I have, have no idea where sleep? they are. Like I just s- have to spend the night in that room. 
No, you have to be asleep. Oh, I have to be asleep? Yes. How am I supposed to fall asleep? Right. It's only one night. Or for an entire year, uh, eat everything with mayonnaise on it. You can avoid the spiders. No spiders. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> so terrible. That's why I saved it for number 10. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was going to be tough. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, eating something every single day that just makes you want to throw up? Mm, no. Can't. Can you imagine going to bed knowing that the thing you fear the most, and then three of them, are in your room? Doing what you fear the most, probably? I mean, if you said, like, regular spiders, and maybe, but tarantulas? Yep. Do they? Do they? They're not poisonous, but they bite. They bite? They're not poisonous. Oh, my God. I just want to, like, run out of the room right now. <laughs> You just want to go purge, go you're purge really some of these spiders. I can tell her hands are like on her neck. She's do- wait, like so you're panicking. sweating, <laughs> <laughs> which is what you'd rather do. <laughs> oh god! So what are you gonna say? Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking so long. This is so awful. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's difficult. That's good. That's what I was hoping for. I. People are going to think I'm crazy, but I guess I would rather spend one night in the room with the spiders. I don't think anyone's going to think you're crazy. Because at least that will be over in one night, and yep. I won't have to deal with mayonnaise for an entire year But there is a, year I didn't tell you life. this, there's a chance you could wake up with one of them in your mouth. Okay, you can't add that on after I answer, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. There's a 33% chance you'll wake up with one of them in an orifice. <laughs> Two thirds chance and you won't. They're so big. I don't like I can crawl up my nose. In your mouth, because you sleep with your mouth mm-hmm. agape. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> I know how to sleep with my mouth closed in case of spiders. <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. Oh, gosh. Well, great. So, okay. So, you'd rather go to bed with three giant tarantulas in your room somewhere. You don't know where Thanks they are or where they're going to be. You're welcome. At least you I don't can't even eat. go to bed At with least like you a don't have tiny. to eat mayo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that is our game for this this episode, Would You Rather. That's going to lead us right into tonight's top five of uh, the week, the weeks, the episode, okay? We are doing our top five silly, fun games. So what do we, what do we mean by this? This is, uh, you can play a game like Vindication, and you can have fun, because we did. We had a lot of fun. Or you can play a game like King's Dilemma and have fun. Or you can play a game like Crazy Eights or something like that, where you're ha- the fun you have is different than the fun you're getting from a cerebral game like a Vindication or a Terra Mystica. Right? You should all know the right. fun I'm talking about. Super silly, fun. You'll know more when we get into our top five. Natalie, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's Me too. Do this. All right. We will see you guys on the flip for our top five. And we're back. All right. Are you ready to do this? The Gamecasters. Top five silly fun games. Natalie, hit us with number five. My number five is Pit. Pit. All right. Tell us why Pit is silly fun. Um, Because everybody's just at a table <laughs> screaming at each other. <laughs> yeah. Two, two, one, three, one, one, three, two, 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 no, two. two. Okay, Throwing a card yeah, trading. Um, there's a cowbell involved. It's terrible with one player. Or a, you know, dinger Ding. bell. A dinger bell. Um, it yeah, was, it's like a cowbell. Yeah, yeah. We've used cowbell. No, it's not a cowbell. We have used yeah, a cowbell. Yeah. But it's more like the kind of bell you go up to the library and you're like, I need some help. Ding. Yeah. Where's it's like, the librarian? Yeah. It's really funny because everyone's just like yelling at each other and laughing and trading and screaming and saying things like, one, 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 two, two, no, no, no. <laughs> we got to play ah! that again. It's yeah. been a while. That's a, that's a, that's, um, that is the epitome of silly fun. Yes. That's a very silly fun game. And that's my number five. All right. Love it. Um, okay, so now you know what we're talking about when we're talking about Silly Fun. That is like the perfect game for this. My number five is Tumbling Dice. Nice. So Tumbling Dice is a very silly fun game where you're just taking dice and you're just throwing them down this, like these, like we talked about this a lot. Stairs. Like cascading down <laughs> stairs kind of thing. And it's hilarious at work because we played at game night and we do this variant where we just walk around the table and, <laughs> and you kind of throw the dice as you walk by. <laughs> yeah, it makes it silly. And it's hilarious because things happen in that game because you're throwing dice. Right. So things happen where, you know, you, you'll you'll hit somebody off and they'll like 
it'll hit them from like a one all the way to a six on the four, which is like 24 points. And you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. how did that happen? And so it's just really crazy, zany, silly fun. And that's my number five, Tumbling Dice. We do a Tumbling Dice tournament every year at NerdFest. And it's so much fun for everybody because it's just a ton of silly fun. Yes. Natalie, what is your number four? Uh, my number four is Team Three. Team Three. We just got that Gen Con, didn't I know. we? Yes, we did. What do you have to say about Team Three? Um, <laughs> what makes that game so silly? That game's silly because of the one person not being able to see, one person not being able to talk, and one person um, talking. <laughs> yeah, just it's talking. Silly to play that game. And interpreting that the game other person right with their silly. hand motions. Uh, we had a lot of fun, silly time playing this game, um, trying to build the structures. And making fun of, like, you know, somebody trying to make hand gestures um, to somebody who tried to explain it to the person who can't see what they're doing. And it's just like a really silly game in general. It is. Fantastic silliness. All right. My number four, Team Three. Are you serious? It is. Yeah. It's my number four. I know. It's fantastic. Uh, So, yeah, Natalie just talked about why that game was so silly and so freaking cool. Yeah. And it's it's, it's really fun. It's a game that... I don't know. It's one of those that's just all. I think it's going to work out with most everybody. I guess. I guess there's people who wouldn't be good at a certain aspect of the game, so maybe they wouldn't like it and they could get frustrated. But it's just hilarious. Even if you it suck, is. it's almost funnier if you suck at it. Yeah. Right. So that's a very silly game called Team Three, and that's awesome. Natalie, hit us with number three. My number three is not your typical kind of game, but it's Don't Get Got. Don't Get Got. Another Gen Con game. Yeah. Wow! All these silly games come out of Gen Con this year. All right, let's hear about it. Um, well, that's the one that you play while you're having a game night, or yeah, what a cool idea that was. Um, and you're just trying to it's like a meta game. fulfill these cards that you secretly have, and trying to basically trick people into doing what the card says. And some of them are silly things, like we at our game night, I had one where it was I just happened to be wearing a button down shirt, and it was like mismatch your buttons on your shirt. And get somebody to ask, like, you know, mention it or say, like, oh, I think your, like, you know, shirt's messed up. And so I, like, made it so dramatic. I, like, basically put, like, the bottom button, like, almost all the way to the top. (laughs) So it was so obviously wrong. And somebody was like, um, was that on purpose or something going on with your shirt? And I'm like, got you. You know, and it's just super (laughs) silly. And you heard about the gamer dog thing at Gen Con. Right. That's just just really fun. Silly, silly stuff. Agreed. That's a fantastic one. Yeah. All right. My number three is uh, this game's been called a bunch of different things over the years. The newest iteration of it is called Monikers. It's also called Time's Up, I think, is basically another version of the game that other gamers might know. Mm -hmm. And this game is very, very silly fun because you have a bunch of cards, and these cards have a word on it. I know we've talked about Monikers before on the show, but basically you can do anything you want to get someone to guess the, the word card in the first round. In the second round, you see the same cards, but you can only say one word to get your team to guess. And in the third round, you can't say anything. You're just acting it out with charades, and you can kind of like, hmm, ha, ha, and you're like doing gestures and stuff like that. So it creates maybe some of the most funny hilarious moments oh yeah we've had some of all super time. funny moments yeah, with that game especially with gina <laughs> yeah gina is a monikers queen yep. right okay that's my number three monikers natalie hit us with your number two my number two is monikers <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was worried we'd have a little overlap with yeah this one, but what i mean that do? one is so silly and fun it is what can you say about that um i can say that it's really silly no <laughs> <laughs> just kidding yeah uh there's a lot of hilarious things a lot of inside jokes that came out of that uh you got to do really goofy things you got to say really goofy goofy things you gotta funny things come out of people's mouths when they're under time pressure and the cards on there are super funny and goofy and silly um it's just Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is cool so (laughs) that's my my number two is strike strike (laughs) strikes a game we talk about all that we've been talking about a lot lately we've been playing it a lot lately it is so (laughs) silly there's an inherent silliness when you're playing with a bunch of dice and this game is literally you're just throwing a bunch of dice into this box and just seeing what happens and getting stuff and the craziest things happen because dice are random and so random things will happen like tumbling dice you'll throw a dice in the arena and you'll get an x which means you remove from the game permanently and then you'll throw another one in there x another one x another one x as jeff can attest to (laughs) and it it becomes like so ridiculous and hilarious and silly and there's nothing uh other than not silly about that game the game is literally just silliness that's all it is (laughs) and it's so fun and that's my number two strike 
So Natalie, I think our number ones are going to be the same. I was going to say the same thing. I think they're going to be the same. All right, let's do let's do medium here. Okay, okay. three, two, one. Happy, happy salmon. salmon. <laughs> yeah, happy salmon has got to be the I silliest mean, that was game like there easily is. Easily number one. For right me. for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why is it so silly, Natalie? Um, because you're wiggling your arm and smacking each other's forearm yeah, with the happy salmon. Yeah, because you can't speak and you have to make all these silly hand gestures and fulfill your cards as quickly as possible. <laughs> and then at the end of the game, everybody everyone's just so like mad. lets out a like, oh my god! Yeah, it's like a big release because like, you're like so tense. Yeah, for the whole everyone's time. so silent and yep. doing all these crazy stuff with their hands, and then it's over, and they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, got like bruises and red marks on your arms, and people with rings are like injuring other people. And yeah, the bruises you talked about a second ago. Right, exactly. It's crazy how awesome. It is. <laughs> you think you're so funny. <laughs> No, I just, it's great. Anyway, <laughs> Happy Salmon is so hilarious. If you want it some is. silly fun in your game nights, and your your, your your game nights have been dry and boring and mm-hmm. drab and a little bit too thinky, and you want to liven them up, get some of the games that we talked about on this list. Tumbling Dice, Team 3, Moniker, Strike, Happy Salmon, Natalie had... Pit, uh, don't Pit. get got. Yeah, those are the only other two <laughs> that we didn't have overlap. Yeah. yeah, we had overlap in a lot of those. Uh, we love these games. They are great, silly fun. They're also just really fun, good games in general. Yeah. And we love them. It's great to pull them out at game nights. And whenever there's like big groups and you want to bring a lot people of these, together, these like, are the games to do it. I play a lot of these with like my family members at like holidays because they good don't call. really play a lot of games. And they're, they like playing um, games that are just really fun and silly sure. instead of like strategy, thinky games. Right. Okay, so with that, that's going to wrap up episode 24 of the GameCasters podcast. Another one in the books. You can get a hold of us if you'd like. We are all over the place now. We are. Uh, uh, you can email us if you have anything you'd like to tell us at thegamecasterspodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. We are at podgamecaster. You can find us on Instagram. We are gamecasters. And you can now find us on Facebook at thegamecasters. Any of those places, uh, we are around to chat. Most notably, you can find us on Instagram. That is where we are spending most of our time uploading pictures and liking things and talking to people. So message us there. Or again, like I said, send us an email, ask us some questions. I'd love to do a Q&A kind of segment. So if you have any questions for us, send those to the at gmail.com. And until next time, my name is Ryan. And I'm Natalie. And we are the Gamecasters. We will see you next time. Well, hello there, children, and I am Ryan. And I am Mrs. Chef. (laughs) Is there a Mrs. Chef? No, I don't think so. I wonder. He's like a ladies' man. Oh, yeah, he doesn't get married. All he does is bang chicks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So basically, you're my flavor of the month, man, right now, children. My favorite thing is that he calls them children, and there's only one of them. We've talked (laughs) about that before, but I think it's funny. Well, hello there, children.